So I have a code. I'll provide the link to you. Let's go through the code, folks. This is the fun part. This is the experimentation part. Okay. So let me just reconnect it. My screen is visible, right? Okay. So let let's go into the let's go into the permutation testing. Okay. Okay. So let me just go here. So here, what I'm doing here is I don't have any data, right? We are not at Netflix, so we don't have the data. I hope my screen is visible. Uh, let me just check it on the stage. Yeah, it is visible. So we don't have data. So we made an educated guess a while ago, if you recall. So we said that most likely, let me see, let me show you. Okay. So we said most likely this data will have this right skew from our intuition that people typically, there are some people who are binge watchers, but most of them will watch only a few minutes. So this distribution could look like this is what we thought of. Again, we are not 100% sure because we are not at Netflix and I've never worked there. So I don't know what the data actually looks like. I could not find actual published research on that, but uh, a published research from Netflix. But there is something called as Pareto distributions. Okay, Very popular occur a lot in nature. So Pareto distributions look like this. Okay, What they say here is, Again, these are multiple Pareto distributions with Pareto distributions can have. Okay, so let me just zoom this in. Okay, so if you have X as a random variable, which is Pareto distributed, Pareto distribution has one, like for example, you have, let's say normal distribution. If X is normally distributed, you have two parameters for normal distribution, right? Mu, which is the mean and the standard deviation, right? So you can describe a whole distribution using mean and standard deviation. Similarly, if X is Pareto distributed, it has a parameter called as alpha. And this is how the distributions look like. If alpha equals to one, this green line, this is the PDF, by the way. This is the PDF of a Pareto distributed random variable. Now, if you observe this green line extends far beyond, it keeps going on. This blue line goes little less if you if you observe this green line is above the blue line which is above the red line right so you could have multiple pareto distributions it's just an educated guess that i'm making okay the distribution itself could be different from pareto by the way so let's assume sim for simplicity because we don't have actual netflix data that xc and xt which are the actual watch times come from pareto distribution let's see how to do a simulation and study this okay now, let's go step by step. Very simple code. I'm importing a bunch of libraries. I'll tell you why I'm using each of these libraries. Matplotlib, I will use it as a plotting library. Seaborn, I'm going to use this as again a plotting library to plot distributions. They look beautiful. NumPy, for all numerical aspects. SciPy, from SciPy, I'm importing stats because I have to use some statistical tools, right? So simple libraries that I'm importing. Then comes the fun part. Okay. Again, remember our experiment. We have XC and we have XT, right? We have N samples from control. We have M samples from treatment. So just for simplicity, I've taken N and M to be very small, 100, 100. And K is the number of resamplings that we do. Okay, N and M are called as the sample sizes. N is the sample size of the control. M is the sample size of treatment. We'll keep changing these and play around. The number of resamplings is typically 1,000 to 10,000, typically, okay? Then I'm creating this seed. So NumPy seed, what it does is when I'm generating random numbers, if I set this seed, every time I get the same random numbers. This is called as seeding a random number generator. Again, if I don't have this, every time my numbers will change. So I just set it to some number so that I can replicate my experiments and show them to you. Now, since we don't have XC and XT, we are simulating them from Pareto distributions here. We don't have it. If you were an engineer at Netflix, you will actually get this data from the A-B test, right? XC is basically N values. Again, this XC is basically a NumPy array of N values. And if you observe, this is coming from Pareto distribution with alpha equals to 10. This is coming from Pareto distribution with alpha equals to nine. So in this case, XC is not same as XT in the real world because we intentionally generated these two. Remember, we gen this is synthetically generated, right? This is a simulated data. We intentionally generated a case where XC is not equals to XT, right? Which means 
the alternative hypothesis is actually true. Now let's see whether we accept the alternative hypothesis or we accept the null hypothesis, right? So the in this world, because of the way we generated this data, we are generating Xs from Pareto distribution with alpha equals to 10, Xt as Pareto distribution with alpha equals to 9, and Nm, right? We generated them. Now we are computing MOBS. What is MOBS? It is a median difference. Look at this. We are what is MOBS? It is the median of Xt minus median of Xc. How do I compute median? Median is the 50th percentile value. So I'm, NumPy has this function. I'm just using it here. Again, if you don't know these functions, they're just a Google search away. I often forget these. I Google search, I go read the documentation and get it. It's as simple as that. Nobody remembers them by heart, especially these Pareto distributions, etc. So what we're doing here is very interesting. We are saying compute the 50th percentile of Xt, which is the median of Xt. So we are taking the median of Xt minus the median of Xc. That's what we're doing. And that's our observed median. Same terminology I'm trying to use here. Now let's actually plot these two distributions quickly. Let's actually plot them, right? So I'm just using simple, again, I'm just using uh, uh, our, uh, our matplotlib to plot distributions. I prefer using Seaborn because they look more beautiful. Okay, I just plotted them. So for this setup, these are the two distributions that I get. Okay, let me explain these distributions quickly. So we have two distributions. The, the purple color is the distribution of control data. The green is the distribution of the treatment time spent, right? So you have these two. Again, time spent can never be negative, right? That's why all these values start from zero and keep going on. Let's assume this is, this is let's say, some number of hours. Some hours spent or something like that, right? Hours spent on it. So if you observe this, Again, we have two observations, right? Again, if you observe these, these distributions, how do they look like? They Again, look at this. They typically look like this. So if you observe, again, very importantly, from this distribution itself, let's remember what we have generated the data. Let's go back to the drawing board. We have Xc as Perito with alpha equals to 10, control. Treatment as Perito with alpha equals to 9. So they're different. Okay, look at this. How do Perito, Perito variables look? As alpha increases, look at this, as alpha increases, this tail reduces, okay, as alpha increases. So we have, we have these two. So Xt, so the way these distributions will look like, again, it's not fully clear from these plots because they're very close to each other. Okay, let me do one thing. Let me do a small change here, right? Instead of picking very close by distributions, let me change the distributions and make them have a huge difference. Now Xt and Xc have a lot of difference, right? Because this alpha value is 10, this alpha value is one. Look at this, as you change the alpha value, this is the plot that I showed you, right? As you change the parameter alpha of the Pareto distribution, the, the distribution itself changes. So instead of taking distributions which are very close, I'm taking distributions which are very far now. So if you plot them, again, this is just to show you the visualization. Okay, just let it run for a second. Okay, so it ran. Uh, this is, this is too tight an interval. Okay. One second. Okay. I should not be doing that far away also. One second, because then everything gets squished and you don't see it properly. Let's see one and three. Probably that's better. Okay. So this has become. Okay. So if you have one and three, again, I, actually, I don't have to go here. I can actually show you this here itself. If alpha equals to one. So let's say zoom. alpha equals to one for our treatment and alpha equals to three for our control. Let's just say, let's just say, okay. Then this green line, this green line here is representing our treatment. The red line here is representing our control. If you observe the green line extends much beyond. Look at this, the green line, while there are lesser values here, more, suppose, suppose if you take this three value here, let's just say, let's just say I take three value here the number of people who are watching it for let's say three minutes or some 30 minutes right is more because the green line is above the red line the percentage of people who are watching the green line is much more than the percentage of people who are watching the red line right so that that's the idea there right so we're just using this okay so 
uh, is there any problem folks is there any problem of any sort uh, just let me check is there any hiccup or problem uh, let me look at the chat window no problem right okay cool cool okay just wanted to make sure that there is no glitch okay so with that out of the way again let's go back to our drawing board so we we are generating data from two distributions let's go back to our 10 and uh, what is the other number okay 9 right? these are the two numbers that i chose now because these two numbers are close the distributions okay let me just plot them here i think it's just the scaling on the y axis which is messing it up okay this is easier to visualize i specifically picked this so if you observe these two again this is control the green ones are treatment just observe this right as you keep going to the right which means more extreme values right you see more of greens here you don't see any um, uh, any purple colors here so the distribution is like this the purple distribution is like this the green distribution okay let me take the green color itself uh, do i have the green color okay the green distribution is like this okay the purple distribution is like this so if this was xc and xt okay the first thing that you have to remember here is xc and xt are different okay we computed the median of xt we computed the median of xc and this is where we have the distributions but we have not yet done anything we just computed the test statistic till now so now let's go and do the actual test statistic the hypothesis testing hypothesis testing is so simple that we can literally implement it in like probably 10 lines of code okay if, if i remove the comment i think it's only 10 20 lines of code first i'm concatenating xc and xt look at this i'm concatenating or i'm combining xc and xt okay simple then i'm saying again after concatenating i'll tell you where test stats come just give me a second for that so i'm repeating this experiment now k times the resampling what i'm doing in this for loop is resampling okay we are going to resample k times now how do we do resampling here instead of implementing shuffling i'm just using the shuffle function here numpy again remember i've combined xc and xt into p and then i'm shuffling this p so here combine is done here shuffle or permute is done shuffling or permuting is done then i'm now splitting them look at this i'm splitting the first n values into a temporary one this is like your s1 and this is like your s1 dash in our example in our so then i'm doing my split here i'm splitting this after permuting i'm splitting them into n values and m values after computing s1 and s2 so s1 is nothing but temp xc temp xt that's what i'm calling them right now i'm taking the 50th percentile of temp xt the 50th percentile the median of xt and the median of xc and i'm subtracting them so what will this give me this is giving me mi the median difference in the ith split combined permute split right in the ith time because i'm repeating this experiment k times look at this i'm repeating this experiment k times so in the ith iteration i'm getting this median difference that's what i'm storing it in this variable called test stats i test stats i is nothing but mi now all i have to do here is i have to say i have my mi look at this my mi's are stored in test stats right i just have to compare my test because i'm repeating this k times what did we assign our k as we assigned our k as thousand times we are resampling very simple code it's actually literally 10 lines of code now i want to visualize what is the distribution of test stats which is exactly what we did earlier right so what did we do we said my m which is which we are calling as test stats i want to get the distribution of that and now my m observed value i want to see how extreme it is i want to also compute that right so let's see that so again the code here is very simple and straightforward i am just doing a distribution plot of test statistics i am simply plotting the distribution of m here that's all very simple code and i want to compute the area of this right the other thing that we have to remember here is we have to compute this area what is this area remember we have m1 m2 so on so forth m n uh, m n plus m okay slightly tongue twisting oh, sorry mk i'm sorry my bad not m plus k here mk 
because we are doing resampling k times, right? So we have k observations. Now, with these k observations, I have to say, what is the area under this? What is the simplest way to compute that area? The simplest way to do that is saying, how many of these values, because this is a distribution of these values, right? The simplest way of computing this, because this distribution is computed using these k values, I just have to say number of values where m observation is greater than or equal to, uh, sorry, number of i, my bad. So you have to compute how many i are greater than or equal to m observation, if you get that. Right? Let's assume that number is some 10. Then the area under this curve will be 10 by k. Because what does this area tell us? This area tells us, think intuitively, right, from probability density function. This area is telling us, what is the, this area, this area is telling us, what is the probability of observing a value that is greater than or equal to the observed MOBS. Okay, that is same as, I already have the k values, right? I can literally count and say, how many of these k values are greater than MOBS or greater than or equal to MOBS? If that is 10, the probability of that is 10 by k. Very simple. And that's what we have exactly written here. Again, we have the MOBS here. Uh, my bad. Okay, there's a small typo here. Again, it will not hurt our code because I've already computed that. So again, I'm just recomputing the M observed here and I'm printing M observed, okay? Then I'm saying amongst all my test statistics, how many, what are my test statistics? My test statistics are nothing but my MIs, right? So amongst all the MIs, how many of them are greater than the observed, greater than equal to the observed value? I'm calling that as a numerator. My probability, which I'm calling, which is nothing but your p-value, your p-value is the area under this curve. Your p-value is the area under this curve. This area under this curve is nothing but of all these observations, how many of them are greater than or equal to m observed divided by the total number of k observations. Because that's what it is, right? This area basically tells us what is the probability of observing a value greater than or equal to the m observed. And that we can easily get it. So that's what I've exactly done here. So H0 is like, like the 10 example that I've shown here, right? So how many, how many MIs are greater than or equal to M observed? Now, once we do that, I'm just computing my p-value as this numerator divided by k, and I'm printing that. And again, whether we accept or not, we can have any significance level. Imagine if my significance level is 5%, we'll say we'll accept. Again, if p-value, is uh, if your p-value is less than this alpha, we will accept or else we will reject. Now let's start doing a bunch of experiments because this that's all is the code. It's literally like 10 lines of code. Okay, again, man Whitney, you will come to that later.